Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. You probably know that After Effects has its own coding language called Expressions. Now, a lot of people are afraid of expressions. Hey, even me. And the dude who said there is nothing to fear but fear itself never looked at this thing. Whew. There's nothing like a lot of complicated math or code to scare an animator away. I don't know about you, but I got into animation to stay far away from math and spelling. Yeah, I had pretty good grades in college, but when you pad it with electives like theater, ancient philosophy, drugs and behavior, history of film, and Russian language taught through the power of bar songs, it makes getting good grades a little easier than some of those, uh, you know, cocky pre-med guys who used to have to sit down with at dinner and they would, like, cut into their chicken and announce what part of the chicken they were cutting into in medical terms. Mmm, mmm, delicious. Okay, back to the tutorial. The good news is that expressions don't always have to have a lot of code or even any math to work. Sometimes all you need to create an expression is alt clicking or on a Macintosh, option clicking on a property stopwatch and then using the expression pick whip to link one property to another. In this case, I'm linking a layer's rotation to its opacity. So now as this layer fades up or down, it rotates because the values for opacity are also being used for degrees of rotation. This expression simply states transform.opacity, which means take the value for rotation from the opacity property value. So if opacity is set to zero, then the layer will be rotated zero degrees. If it's 100% opaque, it'll be rotated 100 degrees. Since we're talking about linking rotation and opacity, I'm going to talk about a problem that often comes up when you're working with two properties such as opacity and rotation that don't share the same range of values. Think about it. Opacity has a range of 0 through 100 percent, whereas rotation has an unlimited range both in the negative and the positive. When you're working with two properties like that, it's time to use the linear function, a method of interpolation between two different ranges of values. It's basically a mathematical method for taking a number that fits within the range of a certain set of values and converts it to fit within another range of values. If you're not clear on what that means, think about a thermometer. If you're in perfect health and you took your temperature while in the United States, the thermometer would report a body temperature of 98.6 degrees. But if you took your temperature in Europe or pretty much everywhere else in the world, the thermometer would say you had a temperature of 37 degrees. Now, I'm no doctor. Remember, I told you earlier, I wasn't pre-med. But 37 degrees seems pretty cold for a healthy human being. But as we all know, the reason the numbers are so different is because in the United States, we're using a different system of measurement for temperature. The U.S. uses Fahrenheit and pretty much the rest of the world uses Celsius. On the Fahrenheit scale, water freezes at 32 degrees and boils at 212, whereas in Celsius, water freezes at 0 degrees and boils at 100. In all cases, the actual amount of heat is the same, but the numbers come up differently because we use a different range of values to interpret that amount of heat. And if you have one of those thermometers with both Fahrenheit and Celsius, you can see that there are two completely different ranges of values fitting into the same amount of space on that thermometer. And if you don't have a dual thermometer, there are mathematical formulae that you can use to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius and Celsius to Fahrenheit. The linear function does a very similar thing in that it takes one value that falls into a certain range of values and converts it to fit within another range of values. Here's what I'm talking about. In this animation, I have this dial rotating. The dial rotates from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees. I want the rotation of this animated dial to also control the opacity of this glow layer, so that as the dial rotates from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees, the light goes from 0% opacity to 100% opacity. The problem is that there's no such thing as a negative 90% opacity. So a negative value means that the layer will be invisible until the dial reaches something higher than 0 degrees. Well, enter the linear function which we're going to use to convert our rotation values to fit within the range of our opacity values. In this case, if we use the linear function to convert our values, a rotation value of negative 90 degrees would equal 0% opacity because it's the lowest value for rotation that we're using and the lowest value for opacity that we want. Positive 90 degrees would equal 100% opacity because it's the highest value for rotation that we're using and the highest value for opacity that we want to use. And to give you a frame of reference, 0 degrees would equal 50% opacity because 0 degrees falls right in the middle of the range of negative 90 to positive 90.
Now this doesn't happen automatically. We have to set the range of values manually, but then once that's done, the math is done automatically. So that said, to set this up, Alt-click on the Glow Layer's Opacity Property stopwatch and type X equals, and then use the Pick Whip to grab hold of the rotation property from the dial layer. As you can see, it adds a bunch of code, which basically means the term X is defined as the value found in the rotation property of the layer called dial. In other words, X equals whatever number is written here in rotation. This is basically a way of defining a term that we're going to use later. Think of it as converting this whole section here into shorthand so that when we write our equation, we can just write X instead of that long line of code. It's not necessary, but it's a lot easier to work with if we use shorthand. Add a semicolon at the end of the line to finish defining the term and hit enter on the keyboard, not the number pad, to go to the next line. Now type the equation linear open parentheses x comma negative 90 comma 90 comma 0 comma 100 close parentheses which means take the value for x which is meant to fit into the range of values from negative 90 to 90 and find its equivalent value if the range were from 0 to 100 hit enter on the number pad to confirm the expression a quick RAM preview and as you can see it's working the great thing about this is that you don't have to do the math all you need to know is the range that you want to use for both sets of values. If you are rotating to a higher value than 90 degrees, say 120, you would just change this third parameter from 90 to 120. Or if you wanted the layer to never become less than 30% opaque, you would change this fourth parameter from 0 to 30. That's it. Not so bad, right? And pretty useful. And I have to tell you, I showed you this expression here because in a few weeks or so, I have a tutorial where I'll need to use this same linear method of interpolation, and I didn't feel like adding an extra five minutes or so explaining it there. Think of it as preemptive laziness. Anyway, I'll end this tutorial with a little bit of Russian wisdom that I learned while in college, and I apologize for killing the language, but here goes. Parumichke, pamalinkoi, nalye nalye nalye, parumichke, pamalinkoi, chimpoit loshodje. Which means, roughly, a little shot glass, a little wine, poor, 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 a little shot glass, a little wine, like you would feed a horse in a barrel. Man, I loved college. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net. I mean, net. Dobre vieche.